Fundamentalism was an outgrowth of war. Fundamentalists, like my own family, had experienced the trauma of war, the experience of war, in, in, uh, for over centuries in Europe as the Scots-Irish. Um, in, the, in the Revolutionary War of the United States, my, my great, 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 great grandfather was a, a soldier in that war. In the Civil War, my great, great grandfather, James Porter Rice, was a Confederate Army captain. In the First World War then, um, that was the cauldron, that was the, the place that it all came together for the fundamentalist movement. And, and the trauma of that war with millions of people being killed on all sides in that war, this horrendous nightmare of blood and pain and suffering and turmoil and desperation and terror, that, that war was what gave birth to the modern fundamentalist movement. In 1919, as the war was winding down, the, the World Christian Fundamentalist Movement had its first meeting, and the word fundamentalist was first uh, created. It was, the, the, the movement arose out of this belief that the world was coming to an end, and that um, all of human life was at stake, and our lives are at stake, our friends, our family are in danger, our communities are in danger, my faith tradition, is in danger, everything that I believe is in danger, and therefore it's really important to me to understand who's on my side. Uh, there's evil and there's good. There's my side and then there's the devil side, and God is on my side. And so um, the fundamentals of the faith came to mean uh, what are the crucial, the crucial doctrines of Christian faith that support my position and that I'm in alliance with, and anybody who disagrees with me on these intellectual assumptions, these intellectual agreements, um, has to be on the side of the devil. So it's interesting to me in this context to think about what, what uh, Abraham Lincoln said at the very beginning of the Civil War. He said, he said the, the, the thing that we must remember is the question, the question is not, is God on our side in this war? The question to ask is, are we on God's side?